do that. Just in case emails are still keep barreling in. Right. Um, now, because you're not here, what we'll do, I'll read. I'll say read the the essay, the female body, in your own time, sort of thing, in a study period, so we can just sort of crack on with the annotating today, sort of thing. So if you read that as well, and we'll come back to that because I want to I want you to link that to this section of the novel too. Um, it's a really good exercise to do. Um, Please, when you're reading it, remember that Margaret Atwood is not being serious. It's, it's a satirical essay. And uh, what she's done is she's put it in a kind of, as you'll see here, she's done it in a sort of um, literary magazine uh, review kind of style of format, as you'd expect. It's written in a kind of completely academic tone. But as you, as you quickly read it, you'll see that, you know, she's making some pointed references here, very much similar to um, The Handmaid's Tale. OK, and if we get to yeah, our CD doctor straight away. Um, oops, hang on. I just need to create a bit of space here, I think, so that doesn't obliterate that. Bring that down. There we are, better. Okay, and what we're looking at for here is this kind of um, immediate reaction uh, when we get here. So this is in chapter 11. Um, I might just take it um, from that sort of third paragraph. So the doctor's office is in a modern office building. We ride up in the elevator silently, the guard facing me. In a blank mirror of the wall elevator, I can see the back of his head. At the office itself, I go in. He waits outside in the hall with the other guardians as one of the chairs placed there for that purpose. Inside the waiting room, there are other women, three of them in red. The, this doctor is a specialist. Covertly, we regard each other, sizing up each other's bellies. Is anyone lucky? The nurse records our names and numbers from our um, passes on the CompuDoc to see if we are who we're supposed to be. He's six foot tall, about 40, a diagonal scar across his cheek. He sits typing, his hands too big for the keyboard, still wearing his pistol in the shoulder holster. When I'm called, I go through the doorway into the inner room. It's white, featureless, like the outer one, except uh, for the folding screen. Red cloth stretched in a frame, a gold some, uh, painted on it with a snake twine sword upright beneath like a sort of handle. The snakes and the sword are bits of the broken symbolism left over from the time before. Now, Ooh, can't spell. So, initial, initial part here then is what what looks and what reads familiar here, and what what's different to a normal doctor surgery. So, if you don't mind, Oliver, I'm going to start with the live person in the room here. I'm going to go to Sophie first. Out of all that, what, what strikes you as being, when we've all been to doctors and that sort of thing, anything strike you as being very, you know, that's just normal, that's what we always do. Right, so yeah, it, 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 the whole idea about you know, yeah, that that's normal that you know going to the doctor for you know very good reason, yeah, 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 nothing different there, yeah. So and it'd be it's yeah, and if you were pregnant, that would be it, yeah. So, yeah, in a non Gilead world, um, yeah, you, you, you go for your regular monthly checkups, all that thing at the doctors, yeah. Oliver, anything else here strike you as being, you know, quite normal? It's normal behaviour? Um, just as like a regular office building, you go up in the elevator. Uh, Sorry, could you say that again? Oh, just that it's like a regular office building and they just go up in the elevator, normal. Right, uh, yeah, but what's different in this elevator? 
there's a guardian in there. There's guards here that we have guards, guards in the elevator. Um, the guard, there's guards everywhere. Even the guy, the, the, the nurse at the, the computer has got his shoulder holster. So I'm gonna pop that into the, the uh, unnormal sort of idea. But when you're waiting around in a doctor's surgery, what do you tend to do to pass the time? And in, what might catch your eye? Isn't it? We all we all do the covert looking at other patients, you know, and we think that wait a minute, I was here before them. Why did they call before me? You know, my appointment was an hour ago. I should be getting seen by now. Yeah, that's kind of a hangover. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's, it's what we all do. We all do that, you know, nice bit. And it's quite, and you, you try to work out, I wonder what they're here for, you know. <laughs> Some people it's kind of obvious. <laughs> Other people, no. Um, yeah, but that, the taking of details, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, it's all those other things, but in the norm, and again, this is what makes other parts of it more chilling. Yeah, um, then if we think about the things that are abnormal. Right. Um, they, I think she was mentioning silence from them, which, like, when you think of hospitals, I like the nighttime, it's quite silent, but in the daytime, it's quite like, busy and bustling. It, it can be that, that sounds, although in the, in the waiting area, isn't it? No, even yeah. when you're talking, people you go, you always whisper, you don't, you never speak out loud. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> How long have you had it for? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll get guards everywhere. Yeah. Lots of guns. Yeah. Oliver, anything else strike you as highly unusual at this surgery? Um, the fact that the doctor's got a pistol. <laughs> oh, has he got? Oh, oh. Wait, he dropped. He dropped. Yeah. I can hear you now. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything that do you find anything else here about unusual, uh, Oliver, in this surgery? Yeah, the nurse has yeah, got a pistol. Got a pistol. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, that is a bit that's a bit unnerving. Yeah. Also, apart from the patients, what is the gender of everybody apart from the patients? They're all male. Guards, nurses, all male. Yeah. The, oops, the only females there are the patients. Yeah. It's almost like they've all been kind of herded together, isn't it? That sort of thing. Um, okay, so and again, the, the symbol. Um, do we know what this? Do you know what the snake and the sword are? Um, do you know? Mm. Mm. Um, right, it's a badge. It is a badge. The snake, the snake and sword emblem are a badge, and they are a badge for who? Who are they? If you know your Greek mythology, isn't you will know the answer. Like, Sorry, Oliver. Uh, isn't it given to one of the? Um, is it Her Hermes or something? 
Oh, you're thinking of the winged messenger? No, it's not Hermes. Wow. Yeah. So it's something to do with like healing or something? Yeah. Might be spelling this wrong, so check it out. In fact, can we just, so I don't know if, if you could just Google Caduce, is, I think that's how you spell it. If not, it might get you to it. And again, I think he comes from the Greek for, for healer. Um, not quite, sir. Uh, how do I spell it? E-A-D. Yeah. U C E U S, right? Ah, that's it. Caduceus, yes. And who was Caduceus, Sophie? It's, it, it's for medicals. Oh, it's a staff. Yes, it's a staff, yep. Yeah. With... Yeah, okay. I'm not quite sure what the snake thing is about, because obviously in other cultures and traditions, isn't it, the snake is seen as being very dodgy. <laughs> oh God, another email. Who's got it now? Yeah. Uh, so that, that's what that is. And again, that, and again, if you look at the Army Medical Corps, they've all got the, the Caduceus symbol um, on, on their on their arms normally or on their, on, their, on, their, on their jackets or uniform at some point. And so it's another kind of hangover to pre-Gileadian days to, you know, to say this is, you know, this is an arm, we are just as it was in the past, that sort of idea. Um, so we've got that. And then we come along to the good doctor himself. Yeah. So, um, when I'm naked, I lie down on the examining table on the sheet of chilly, crackling, disposable paper. I pull the second sheet. The cloth, the cloth went up over my body. At neck level, there's another sheet suspended from the ceiling. It intersects me so that the doctor will never see my face. He deals with the torso only. Now, as I've mentioned to you before, this is something that's been borrowed very much from which faith? Christianity? No, not Christianity. Islam, yeah, the Islamic Muslim faith. Oops. You know, as there is meant to be, and and sometimes as well, a case that the again the weird thing was because wasn't it? It was in, in those. Society, if you go back, women wouldn't be able to be doctors, so you couldn't request a female doctor. It would always be a male doctor, but one way to kind of get around this, and it was only the part of your anatomy that was unwell, sort of thing, that you needed tendering to, that would be the only bit that would be seen in, a, in a, a hole in the sheet, sort of thing. So that, you know, it's meant to be honour, dignity is preserved here. Um, when I'm, now that's interesting, isn't it? when I'm arranged, what does that say? Think of this with your linguist's head on, Oliver, here. When I'm arranged, what does that suggest about Alfred? So she's more of like an object than a person. Good, yeah. Straight away we're getting that objectification, which is it, it's all the easier, all the easier, um, because of being covered up, isn't it? We're, the doctor's only dealing with the body part. He's not having to deal with the face. Yeah. We 
So if you want to add anything to that, um, the idea about I'm being arranged. Good. Yeah. So you can't see this. I'm busily wagging my finger at Sophie as to say yes, yes, yes. Two thumbs up. Yes. Yeah. In fact, since you've turned up to my lesson, Sophie, unlike others, you know, I'm going to give you a merit for that today. I think that. that sorry. <laughs> You're joking. I thought I'd given you one already. No. Oh. I will rectify that then, Sophie. My because you're showing great resilience at the moment. <laughs> yeah. And it is. You know, and again, uh, again, if you think of, you know, let's go back to Toy Story. Think of Mr. Potato Head, Mrs. Potato Head. Now you can stick on your arms and your head and you can change the whole thing. It's that, isn't it? It's almost like, and she's being arranged. And the question's got to be, who's she being arra arranged for? Oh, my God. Who's she being arranged for? It's sort of like in like yeah, yeah, yeah. And isn't it, I mean, again, it's that idea, um, you know, it's, it's for the doctor, it's for men, isn't it? This is this is the idea that was going on here. Um, so I reach my hand out, fumble for the small lever at the right side of the table, pull it back. Somewhere else, a bell rings unheard by me. After a minute, the door opens, footsteps come in, there is breathing. He isn't supposed to speak to me except when it's absolutely necessary. But this doctor is talkative. Now, um, what technique, um, straight away, what, what, what is Atwood focusing on here, straight away? That is it. Don't sound so unsure. You're spot on, Sophie. Yeah, it is, because it's footsteps, breathing. Why focus on the hearing? Why do you think she focuses on the sense of hearing? Okay, and think about how she's being arranged as well. Just as she can't see, or she can't be seen by the doctor, can she see the doctor the way that she's arranged? No. So again, it is, that's why it's got to focus on the hearing. Yeah. see each other that sort of idea and it is that and again think how kind of unnerving that is as well think about how and again when we know when we know what the doctor gets up to just think how that idea about his breathing will become horribly oppressive and it's completely understandable why you reacted that way when walking out the dog and the man went are you okay dear <laughs> because it is just so it just makes your skin crawl yeah um so how are we getting along? Well, what's unusual about that? How are we getting along? He says, some tech of speech from the other time. Oliver, what's unusual there? Can you say that again? Sorry, you broke for a second. Okay, um, with, with the doctor's first um, sort of uh, chapter, he goes, how are we getting along here? What, 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 what's unusual about that? It's very like, Casual, casual. Mm. considering the whole thing has been very like regimented and formal. Yeah. And think about who's he talking to and what's happened to her. What is Alfred? Sophie. Handmaid. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> um, And as well as being a handmaid, what is she? If we think of it in terms of what's happened to her. Yeah, she's a rape victim, you know, and then he comes with his chat, you know, how are we this month? You know, has the rape worked this month? Are we with child? 
oh, well, we have to have you raped again next month. You know, that that's the kind of idea behind it, isn't it? It's horrible. So I just did that from previous discussions. Um, Um, oh, you think that, um, um, speech from another yeah. Now, a, a verbal tech is, it's you know how again you know you know how teachers have catchphrases. Yeah. Yeah. It's sort of like, um, and they do it by the water pilot. Yeah, they, they can't they can't help yeah. themselves. Yeah, it's that idea, you know, and it's almost like you know how sometimes folks say. Immediately, you just see they just start with the same phrase all the time. Well, how are you? Or not nice weather we're having here, is it? You know, it's that sort of thing. It's just as you say, the, it's just a, a, an automated response. No thought goes into it, and they just go. Also, it's it, in what other sort of setting would you hear that kind of thing saying, Oh, how are you? Mm. Yeah. I'll get it queued up for tomorrow. I had something that it was really horrible, not really horrible, but again, it can, it, it you can't, I can, every time I hear these things, I think, oh, that is so, that is so handmade tale. That is so, and it's like radio interviews and things like this. We'll be able to get it on the iPlayer. Um, I'll just queue it up for tomorrow. Oh, I'll probably send, what well, I'll just send it out to you because I think, I don't see you tomorrow. I don't think. Do I? No, it's that, it's that, it's that. It's available free day. I'll get it queued up so we've got it for Friday's lesson. And it's something that I, I, I won't, I won't, preempt it. I'll, I might even send it to you to listen say, right, go to this bit, because it will blow your mind about, you know, what sort of world we live in. You just think, hey, what? Um, and it ties in with this guy here. So, yeah, so we've got that. Um, so we've got that. It's almost like he's, you know, having a nice little uh, chit-chat. And then it gets, you know, the she is lifted from my skin, a draft pimples me. So again, more sensory detail now, isn't it? It's the idea of touch. A cold finger rubber clad jellied slides into me i am poked and prodded the finger retreats enters otherwise and withdraws now you cannot help but get that there is sexual connotation going on there isn't there as well yeah uh, and it gets worse you know nothing wrong with you the doctor says as if to himself any pain honey and again it, it, she's got it and she italicizes this isn't she he calls me Honey, what can we make of that? Right, what does that tell us about his perception, the doctor's perception of her? What a, who do we call honey? Who would you say? I mean, as, as, sorry? Yes, that's a term. I mean, it's a very American one. Um, you know, hi, honey, I'm home sort of thing, isn't it? Um, but it is a term, you know, it's a term that is used by lovers to each other, that sort of thing. You know, nowadays you might say, you all right, babe? <laughs> That kind of thing. <laughs> also, you're thinking about, you know, again, it's that image, isn't it, of, I, I also make the connection. What else do you connect with honey? Right, but the, take that enough. So, so it's sweet and it's quite positive to use it. Ah, nice. And again, if we think about the bees and the honey, and again, it's all about pollination, fertilization, all that, it's all heavily loaded. Yeah, so we can begin to think of all those things. It's such a heavily loaded phrase, yeah? And that gets her, 
you know, her antennae spark at this, isn't there? And again, almost, and again, when the doctor says as well, you know, nothing wrong with you, it's as if he's regarding her as a what, Sophie? I'm going to do it because I think probably, all of it, I'm, not, I'm not meaning to leave you out here, but I think it's probably easier if I have this sort of conversation with Sophie who's kind of in front of me, but feel free to jump in at any point, okay? Okay. Yeah, um, so um, as I was saying there, yeah, you know, he says there's nothing wrong with you. It's almost as if he's, he's seeing her as what? Or a S word? Right idea, animal or a... He's giving her a poke and a prod saying, mm, nothing wrong with you. Mm, mm, mm. Like a... SP? Think medical? S-P-E-C. Uh, Oliver got it. It's like, it's like she's a specimen, isn't it? You know, I say, oh, he's like, oh, yeah, you're all right. Yeah, you'll do. He's kind of sizing her up, isn't it? Um, and then she just, she just gives the one word answer. No, I say, my breasts are fingered in their turn. A search for ripeness wrought. The breathing comes nearer. Yeah, yes. In case you, just to let you know, Sophie just visibly shivered at that point. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Um, but again, isn't it? She's been looked at, you know, for ripeness. It's like, you know, it's like some sort of fruit, isn't it? Some sort of, you know. <sighs> yeah. And then, yeah, the breathing again comes nearer. Blessed be the fruit, yes. Oops. Hang on. Let me see. Go. Go. Um, and yeah, yeah, and, and, and what we've got here as well, um, and again, you know, it's all the things that again that kind of go that make him masculine, isn't it? The smell of old smoke, aftershave, tobacco dust, and here. Then the voice, very slow, uh, soft, close to, to my head. That's him, you know. And again, it's, oh, what are we thinking here with the voice? Any ideas, Oliver? What, what do you make of that, that he chooses to speak, you know, and it's close to the head? It's kind of like, kind of like predatory. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Mm. Yeah. Good, yeah. So we can think about that as invade her intimate that intimate space is invaded. Um also, I think as well, it's almost it's almost psychological. It, it, it's psychological kind of manipulation too, isn't it? By you know, it's like I think and he's trying to sort of wheedle his way into her thoughts, into her head, you know, because it's just this disembodied voice. That is coming into her, and of course we all we all trust doctors, and it's one of those professions that you trust. That sort of idea, yeah. And as if that wasn't bad enough, that's him bulging the sheet. So again, we've got the sexual imagery going on here. Now, obviously, it could just be because he's coming down, isn't it? Close to her, there is that, but you cannot help. But think of something else as well, I would say, at the same time. Yeah. 
I think we're all there without being any more graphic. Yeah, uh, and, and so again, and again, she's just like, isn't she? Is absolutely vulnerable, isn't she? And then it's the insidiousness of all, oh, isn't it? I could help you. He says, whispers. Now, go into a different colour. Yeah. Is he helping her? Or helping someone else. Oliver, what would you say? Is the doctor genuinely helping Alfred or is he helping someone else? Um, definitely helping someone else. Definitely helping someone else, not her. And who would that someone else be? Um, like Gilead as a whole, like the cause. No, no. Thank you. Oh, yeah, that is true. <laughs> yeah. It's quite literal, isn't it? He is, you know, it, it, it's like you're here, you're vulnerable. Hey, hey, I can sort this out. This is about helping himself. This is about personal gratification, isn't it? About a piece of power. Yeah. I think was it was she I think she was two hours, wasn't she? I mean again, just think just think of that Sarah Everard again, the abuse of power. I'm a policeman. I'm stopping you because you're breaking COVID rules into the car, please. You know, it's the same abuse of power that is going on here for the same self gratification. You know, Gilead also allows this to happen, encourages this to happen, isn't it? Here's the thing, oh, wait a minute, these commanders, they get away with that once a month. Why can't I do that as a doctor? And it's the fact that he whispers it, isn't it? That's what makes it really, because he knows that, that, the fact that he whispers, that tells you he knows this is wrong. Yeah. And then he, he, sh she says, he, goes, sh he says, I could help you. I've helped others. As if that makes it all right. You know, it's like saying, hey, don't worry. I've raped other women. You know, you're not my first. You won't be my last. Yeah. Help me, I say. My voice is low. He says, how? Does he know something? Has he seen Luke? He, has he found? Can he bring him? Uh, can he bring back? Um, and it's this idea, isn't it, that, you know, she immediately leaps to something else. She doesn't make the connection straight away of what he is suggesting. Which again highlights how like, ridiculous his idea Yeah. Yeah. How do you think, he says, still barely breathing? And again, it's that, the barely breathing, isn't it? You know, it's, it's centric. And then, is that his hand sliding up my leg? And it's just getting, what's he thinking this? And the doctor's head, this is what? It is, but it's something else I would suggest to you. Right. Who else, who else would behave in that matter? Think about it not being, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. think about it not being Gilead. Um, think about this in another circumstance with a man and a woman and they're, and they're close, they are intimate and their hand is sliding up like that. What would that be in another situation? Yeah, yeah. This, and, 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 and the doctor's mind, he's playing this out, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. 
And again, think from, you know, remember about the gym smell of the old sex. She talks about, you know, when it's that high school romance, the first, you know, the kiss, first kiss, the first kind of fumble with a boy, all that sort of thing. The doctor's back in that landscape too, isn't he? So in the old days, this is what we used to do. We used to go up cozy with a patient or, you know, with somebody that was your lover sort of thing. This is how it would go. He's thinking this is some sort of normal seduction process that's taking place here. No, it's not. It's an abuse of power. Yeah, it's abuse of his status, and it's in defiance of Gilead. And he's taken off the glove. The door's locked. No one will come in. They'll never know it isn't his. And he lifts the sheet. The lower part of his face is covered by the white gauze mask. <laughs> it's just like COVID days, isn't it? <laughs> Regulation. Two brown eyes, a nose ahead with brown hair in it. His hand is between my legs. Most of the old guys can't make it anymore, he, sa he says, or they're sterile. I almost gasp, he said a forbidden word, sterile. You know? And this is, the, this is the madness, isn't it, of Gilead, um, where you don't, uh, you don't accept the problem. The problem is not men, because if we talk about sterility, that is going to be the case that you then look at men. And men are never the problem in Gilead. It's always the female. Um, but it's this kind of, you know, it is, it, it's, it's that the horrific moment, isn't it, of her hand just moving at will across her body, and she can do nothing to stop this. Yeah. Um, no such thing as a sterile man anymore, not officially. There are only women who are fruitful and women who are barren. That's the law. Lots of women do it. He goes on, you want a baby, don't you? Again, think about how manipulative that is. Yeah, and also, isn't it? I mean, again, is how do you answer a statement like that? You know, you know, it's that maternal instinct. Yeah. Where were you on this time date? You were here, weren't you? Yeah. And it's about these parents tricking the um, person in custody into giving the answer that you wanted to give. Exactly, yeah. Because it, it, it's like a, it's such a loaded question that you, and either way you kind of answer it, it, it it's a no-win situation. Because, you know, if it's no, well, you can't, you can't say no as a handmaid in, in Gilead because that's the whole purpose. You're here to produce a baby. And again, she, don't forget, she's had children. And she's had her children ripped away from her. And so she, of course, I mean, it, and again, it's all about that idea, you know. And again, isn't it it's that certain time of the month as well? If you're a female, your hormones are going to be ram rampaging through your body sort of thing. And at that point, you may, the, the desire to have a child is stronger. It's just, you know, it's just biology sort of thing. Um, and it's all this kind of insidious, it's the things that he plays upon at this point. Yeah. And again, you can see that and it's her own answer. Yes, I say it's true. I don't ask why, because I know, give me children or else I die. There's more than one meaning to it. Um, You know, in that respect as well, isn't it? You know, if she doesn't, and the, the, we know the handmaids get three attempts, basically three different households to try and get pregnant, produce a child. If not, some other fate awaits them. And one of those fates might be just getting shipped off to the colonies because it'll be regarded as being, you know, that's it, no longer fertile, um, you know, in, in this one, yeah. And again, it, it just gets, you know, the ultimate in, in insidiousness here, isn't it? You're soft, he says, it's time. Today or tomorrow we do it. Why waste it? It'd only take a minute, honey. What he calls his wife once, maybe still does, but really it's a generic term. We are all honey. You know, and again, this is this kind of, isn't it? This predatory, instinctive behaviour, you know, to him and to other males, that's all these women are, yeah? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, again, it's that whole thing. It, it, it's tying into the whole thing about the biological clock. You know, you're not getting any younger. You soon won't be able to have children, that sort of thing. You know, and it's I'm here, I'm able. It's almost as if, you know, I'm doing you a favour, an absolute favour by doing this. Okay? Like just offering, offering, like offering us some kind of guarantee. Yeah, I mean, and again, and it's making the whole thing, isn't it? It's transactional. Um, you know, it, it's horrific, isn't it? This is what human relationships have been sort of reduced to. Something transactional. Do this and you'll live a bit longer. Life won't be so bad for you. Yeah, okay. And there, we leave it for today. That'll be that. If you could, for Friday, yeah, if you read through that um, essay that we've got at the top here, the female body, I'll put it into... Um, he praised that thing and, and, our, and our teams just to remind you as well sort of thing so it's there and we'll, we'll link that to this section of the novel on friday as well hopefully we'll have you back in the room on friday oliver oh i've just got the email that it's negative so i'll be back in tomorrow well, hey oh that, that's good news eh? that's a good one yeah good oliver we'll see you tomorrow then <laughs> yeah okay okay thank you sir right. see you later oliver bye Bye. Oh, I don't. <laughs> right, thanks, Sophie. See you later. <laughs>